about to give you one of my famous free anatomy lessons because yeah that's what we do here. Today we're doing the big picture overview. My friends this is your vocal tract. It goes from the glottis or that space where your vocal folds close to phonate all the way to your lips. Its primary responsibility is a part of the digestion process, so getting food into your system. But in regards to sound making, it's responsible for taking that buzzy quality that's happening around the vocal fold level and turning it into a million different colors, sounds, vowels, consonants, qualities, things you might refer to as timbre, all of that stuff. Without a vocal tract, the sound that's happening at the vocal fold level would sound a lot like a duck call. If you lay your head back and open up your vocal tract as much as you can, so open your mouth a ton, you might kind of hear this duck-like quality. Uh, uh, uh. The second you put a vocal tract on top of that sound, Oh man, the options are endless. We kind of like to separate out the vocal tract into two major sections with some subdivisions within that. The first section is your pharynx, or everything behind the hump of the tongue. And the second is the oral cavity, literally what's happening inside your mouth. There are three subdivisions of the pharynx that we like to talk about. The laryngopharynx, which is there in blue, the oropharynx, which is there in green, and the nasopharynx, which is there in yellow. It becomes pretty easy to remember these subdivisions if you know that the laryngopharynx is referring to the space around the larynx, the oropharynx is referring to the space behind the oral cavity, and the nasopharynx is referring to the space behind the nasal cavity. The reason we divide these is because there are some really unique things that happen at each of these different parts in the vocal tract. But I promise we will get to those later. For now, it might be helpful to know that the pharynx side of things is responsible for adding room, warmth, depth, richness, resonance to the sound. And the oral cavity is responsible for clarity. So your vowels, your consonants, the ability for us to understand what you're saying. One of the big important things for voice teachers to remember is that these two areas have kind of an inverse relationship in regards to space. Most often, if the oral cavity is small, the pharynx is big. And as soon as we open up that oral cavity, the pharynx is gonna respond by becoming smaller. This has a lot to do with the tongue. This might go against some previous body mapping concepts that your teachers might have offered you, like let's drop your jaw to create more space and room in the sound. But if you drop your jaw, yeah, you might create more space in the oral cavity, but the oral cavity isn't the thing that's responsible for adding more depth or room to the sound. You just made that part a lot smaller by dropping your jaw. 